methods of recording purchases. So, meron tayong dalawa, gross method and net method. Okay, so, yung example, dun sa reference book pa rin natin kay, Va kay Valix. So, ito yung i-record natin, purchases on account, 200,000, 2 over 10, and 30. So, i-record natin using gross method and net method. So, pag sinabi natin gross method, i-record -re natin yung purchases at gross at 200,000. Pag net method naman, ibig sabihin, tatanggalin mo na agad yung discount. So, nakanet na agad yung discount. Okay? So, paano yung magiging entry once na nakabayad tayo within the discount period or makabayad tayo beyond the discount period? So, using gross method and net method. Okay? So, kapag in natin yung purchases natin using gross method, so, ang entry natin, debit purchases 200,000. So, gross amount. Okay? But, pag net method, same entry lang, debit uh, purchases and credit accounts payable. But, yung amount dito, ang i-record ire natin ay 196,000. So, ano yung 196,000? 200,000 times 98%. Bakit 98%? Tinanggal na natin yung 2% na cash discount. So, kaya ang i -re record lang natin 196,000. So, anong difference sila yung amount? So, dito, kay gross method at gross, kay net method at net, kahit hindi mo pa siya nababayaran within the discount period, so, upon purchase pa lang, in-record mo na siya at net na nung discount. Okay? At 196,000. So, ano naman yung magiging entry kapag nabayaran natin within the discount period. So, ito naman yung entry natin kapag nakabayad tayo within the discount period. So, under ng gross method, debit accounts payable. So, magkano mo i-record yung accounts payable? Tandaan kung magkano yung kinredit mo nung nag-purchase ka. So, 200,000. Tapos, credit, cash discount, ay cash, so, 196,000. Paano na kuha yung 196? 200,000 times 98%. So, 196. Credit, purchase, discount, 4,000. Paano na kuha yung 4,000? 200,000 times 2% equals 4,000. Or, 200,000 minus 196. So, 4,000. So, ito, nakarecord as purchase, discount. Pag net method naman, ano lang entry natin? So, debit, Accounts payable. Magkano lang ang i-debit natin? 196. Okay, class. Marami nagkakamali dyan. Ang nailalagay pa rin ay 200,000. But tandaan ninyo, kapag tin-200,000 mo yan, ang kinredit mo lang nung nag-purchase ka ay 196. Tapos i-debit mo ng 200,000. So, magkakaroon ka pa ng balance na 4,000 debit. So, mamali. Mali, di ba? So, kung magkano yung kinredit mo dito, yun lang din yung i-debit mo dito. So, 196,000. And credit cash, 196,000. So, meron ba kayo nakita na inirecord pa natin yung uh, cash discount? Hindi na natin siya inirecord na nai-reflect na, na purchase discount. Kasi inirecord na natin at net. Okay? So, nung inirecord mo nung nag-purchase ka 196,000, so babayaran mo is 196,000. Okay. So, what if kapag binayaran naman natin siya beyond the discount period? So, kapag beyond the discount period naman tayo nagbayad, under ng gross method, ang entry lang natin, debit accounts payable. So, tandaan kung magkano yung kinredit mo nung nag-purchase ka. So, 200,000. So, since wala kang cash discount dahil hindi mo nakuha, hindi mo na-avail yung cash discount, so ang babayaran mo, ay 200,000. Okay? So, but pagdating sa net method, so, di ba nung nag-purchase ka, nirecord mo na agad, tinanggal mo na agad yung cash discount. So, nirecord mo na lang siya as 196,000. So, pag nagbayad tayo, ang debit natin na accounts payable ay 196,000. Tulad kanina, nung sinabi ko, hindi pwedeng 200,000 yan kasi magkakaroon ka pa ng debit balance na accounts payable. 196,000. But ang ibabayad mo pa rin ay 200,000 kasi hindi ka naka-avail ng 2% na discount. So, kaya credit, cash, 200,000. So, ano yung 4,000 na difference? So, ang tawag doon, purchase discount loss. So, ito, inire-record siya as other 
expense. Okay? So, yun yung difference nila. Yun yung pinagkaiba pag ang ginamit natin ay gross method or net method. So, sabi, the cost measured under the net method represents the cash equivalent price on the date of payment and therefore, theoretically correct historical cost. However, in practice, most entities record purchases as at gross invoice amount. Kaya lang, sabi, the gross method violates the matching principle because discounts are recorded only when taken or when cash is paid rather than when purchases that give rise to the discounts are made. So moreover, this uh, procedure does not allocate discounts taken between goods sold and goods on hand. Kasi inire-record natin siya at 200,000 pa din. But dito kasi, inire-record natin na siya at 196. Kumbaga, natanggal mo na yung discount pagdating dun sa computation ng uh, cost of goods sold and kung may matitira dun sa inventory. So, despite its theoretical shortcomings, the gross method is supported on practical grounds. So, the gross method is more convenient than the net method from a bookkeeping standpoint. So, moreover, if applied consistently over time, it usually produces no material errors in the financial statements. Cost of inventories. So, the cost of inventories shall comprise cost of purchase, cost of conversion, and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. So, i-discuss muna natin yung cost of purchase. So, the cost of purchase of inventories comprises the purchase price. Okay? So, purchase price, import duties, irrecoverable taxes, Okay, tandaan plus irrecoverable taxes, freight, handling, and other costs directly attributable to the acquisition of finished goods, materials, and services. So, tandaan nyo, yun yung cost nung uh, inventories natin. Okay, so purchase price, import duties, recoverable taxes, freight, handling, and other costs directly attributable to the acquisition of finished goods, materials, and services. So, trade discounts, rebates, and other similar items are deducted in determining the cost of purchase. So, kapag mayroon trade discount or rebates, so, dinideduct na natin doon sa cost of purchase. So, the cost of purchase shall not include the foreign exchange differences which arise directly from the recent acquisition of inventories involving a foreign currency. So, maki-note uh, nyo yun. Kapag daw uh, may difference doon sa foreign exchange, so hindi inire-record yun or hindi isinasama doon sa cost ng purchase. Moreover, when inventories are purchased with deferred settlement terms, the difference between the purchase price for normal credit terms and the amount paid is recognized as interest expense over the period of financing. So, kapag ang payment natin ay uh, deferred, naka-deferred, so, yung difference daw nung purchase price, kung normal lang, kung usual na babayaran mo, uh, na hindi mo babayaran, but pina-defer mo siya, so, yung difference nun, ire-record natin siya as interest expense. Next, cost of conversion. So, uh, cost of conversion includes cost directly related to the units of production such as direct labor. It also includes a systematic allocation of fixed and variable production overhead that is incurred in converting materials in to finished goods. So, kung nalala nyo class, doon sa isa kong uh, lecture, doon sa manufacturing, manufacturing operations. So, meron doon, um, di ba, meron tayo doon uh, total manufacturing cost or total production cost. So, yung total production cost consist of uh, materials, direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Ito yun yun. 
direct labor and production overhead or pro, uh, factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. So, pag sinabi kasi nating direct labor and factory overhead, yun yung conversion cost. Kapag direct materials and direct labor, yun yung uh, prime cost. Okay, so pag sinabi natin cost of conversion, so ano yung kasama dyan? Direct labor and overhead. So, yung overhead, yung manufacturing overhead, so sin um, kinasify pa sa fixed and variable uh, manufacturing overhead or production overhead. So, ano yung difference ng fixed and variable? So, ito, madidiscuss din natin yan pagdating nyo doon sa cost accounting sa second year first sem. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin fixed production overhead or fixed factory overhead is the indirect cost of production that remains relatively constant regardless of the volume of production. Kaya sinabi fix. Ibig sabihin, kahit na mag-increase or mag-decrease yung uh, volume or yung production natin, yung amount niya ay fix. Kapag naman variable production overhead or variable manufacturing overhead is the indirect cost of production that varies directly with the volume of production. So, ito, pag sinabi yung variable, nagvary. Depende kung mag-increase yung production or mag-increase yung volume or mag-decrease. So, kung fix, kahit na mag-increase or mag-decrease, fix siya, constant siya. Si variable, nagvary. Kapag nag-increase yung production or yung volume, mag increase din yung variable cost niya. So, pag nag-decrease yung production or yung volume, mag-decrease din yung variable cost. So, pag sinabi natin production overhead or manufacturing overhead, ito yung mga indirect materials, indirect labor and other costs para makapag-produce ng product. Okay? So, yan yung cost of conversion. So, allocation of fixed production overhead. Sabi, the allocation of fixed pro production overhead to the cost of conversion is based on normal capacity of the production facilities. So, normal capacity is the production expected to be achieved on average over a number of periods or seasons under normal circumstances, taking into account the loss of capacity uh, resulting from planned maintenance. So, the amount of fixed overhead allocated to each unit of production is not increased as consequence of law production or idle plan. So, an allocated fixed overhead is recognized as expense in the period in which it is incurred. So, allocation of variable production overhead naman, so, is allocated to each unit of production on the basis of actual use. So, pag fix based on normal okay, capacity. Kapag variable, yung allocation natin based on actual use. Okay. So, a production process may result in more than one product being produced simultaneously. So, this is the case, for example, when joint products are produced or where there is a main product and a byproduct. So, ayan, madidiscuss din yan pagdating sa cost sa accounting. So, when the cost of conversion are not separately identifiable, they are allocated between the products on a ra rational and consistent basis. So, for example, on the basis of relative sales value of each product. So, most byproducts by their nature are not material. So, byproducts are measured at net realizable value and this value is deducted from the cost of the main product. So, yun, i-atandaan nyo muna yan. So, pagdating sa cost accounting, madidiscuss din natin siya. Okay? So, next ay yung last, other cost. So, other cost is included in the cost of inventories only to the extent that is incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. Okay? So, yan yung tatlong cost of inventories. Cost of purchase, cost of conversion, and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. So, however, the following costs are excluded from the cost of inventories and recognized as expenses in the period when incurred. So, ito naman yung mga hindi natin i dapat i-include as cost ng inventories. So, but i -re record natin siya as other expenses. So, it, ito naman yung dapat i-exclude 
dun sa cost ng inventory. So, yung A, abnormal amounts of wasted materials, labor, and other production costs. So, B, storage costs, unless these costs are necessary in the production prior to a further production stage. So, kung uh, yung storage costs ay prior dun sa production stage, so, dapat i-record siya as inventories. Okay, so dapat i-record siya as cost nung inventory. So kaya pag daw yung st storage cost ay doon sa goods in process, so capitalize siya. So ibig sabihin, kasama siya doon sa cost ng inventory. But kapag finished goods yun, storage cost ng finished goods, so recorded siya as expense. Okay, so yung C, administrative overheads that do not contribute to bring inventories to their present location and condition. And yung last, distribution or selling cost. So, yan yung mga dapat i-exclude okay, sa cost ng inventories. Cost of inventories of a service provider. So, consists primarily of the labor and other costs of personnel directly engaged in providing the service including supervisory personnel and attributable overhead. So, labor and other costs relating to sales and general administrative personnel are not included but are recognized as expenses in the period in which they are incurred. So, yung isasama mo lang dyan is yung labor ng mga personnel directly engaged in providing the service. Kaya daw yung administrative or yung sales and general administrative personnel hindi sila dapat i-include doon sa cost ng inventories ng service provider. Mag-iwan ulit ako ng isang problem. So, answeran ninyo and i-comment ninyo kung ano yung answer ninyo. So, magbibigay ulit ako ng plus. Okay? So, on February 1, Fabial Company sold merchandise with a list price of 2 million to a customer. So, the entity allowed trade discounts of 30% and 5%. So, credit terms were 2 over uh, 15 and 30. And the sale was made FOB shipping point. So, the entity prepaid 150,000 of delivery costs for the customer as an accommodation. So, the customer paid in full on February 16. Okay? So, ang tanong dyan, what amount is received from the customer as full remittance? Remittance. Okay? So, so yung question ay, uh, what amount is received from the customer as full remittance? Okay? So, comment nyo yung answer ninyo. So, tingnan nyo mabuti yung mga, ano ha, yung discounts and yung uh, date. Okay? So, so, tingnan nyo mabuti yung mga dates and yung mga discounts. Okay? So, meron na ding sinama dyan na freight uh, charge or freight cost. Tapos, asabi dyan ay FOB, shipping point. So, ano na, nagkasama-sama na yung mga na-discuss natin. Okay? So, para ma, ma, ano natin, makita nyo kung naintindihan ba. Okay? So, minsan parang andali ng problem. Pag sinasagotan mo na, ay, meron pala akong namali, may nakalimutan, or kaya meron pala akong na-overlook. So, pagdating sa atin, pagdating sa accounting, so, dapat ay accurate. Okay? So,